your eyes on the Class of 59 Harley Davidson FLH. This is called the Duo Glide. It was the second year of the first FL rear suspension Harley Davidson Big Twin 74 cubic inch. This thing is rated for 55 horsepower and 100 miles an hour, and it was the bike, the king of the highway in 59. Let me give you a quick demonstration. This one was owned by Harold Zahner from the Zahner Collection at Bakersfield, California. 43 motorcycles. He owned a Harley shop, and uh, of all the bikes he had, I do believe this is my favorite one to ride. It's an absolute joy, and it feels like you're riding a 90s Heritage Softail. Quick start. Guys, I've probably ridden more classic motorcycles than anybody alive today. Um, literally 7,500 bikes just in the last 10 years. And we have hundreds of them on display here in the museum. And this is on the podium as my favorite classic vintage big twin to ride. It's an absolute joy. And the reason why, well, there's a bunch of reasons why. One, it starts really easy. Two, it runs flawlessly. Jimmy Laurinaitis who is, has a genius IQ, he's, he won a national troubleshooting contest, um, and he's been a mechanic for his entire life. He's 50-something years old now. Uh, this bike looked just like this when he got it, but he went through it and super tuned it, and I'll, I'll have the work order written up on what he did, but it runs freaking perfect, shifts perfect. He went through the primary uh, and the clutch pack and everything, and everything is just absolutely pristine on it. This bike was owned by Harold Zahner, who owned b and Cycles in Bakersfield, California. This was one of his pride and joys that he had in his living room. I have the video from when I pulled this out of his living room, I don't know, two, three months ago in Bakersfield, California. And 
he had gone through it top to bottom. Everything's been done on the bike, the engine, the paint. All the tins are original. These bags are the original Harley Davidson. I, I took a picture of the patent number on the back of them, the original bags, which is unheard of to find a set in this condition. The original, um, the entire bike's all original except for the paint and tires and, and some of the, 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 the uh, consumables, which are all new. The, the battery, the, all the fluids, everything else. It runs perfectly mechanically. This bike is an absolute 10. One of the reasons I like it too is, although you're riding a 1959, it, I, it feels like a 99 Heritage Softail. The clutch, the brakes, the transmission, everything's where, where you'd expect it to be. And it looks the part. The black, the chrome, mechanically, a 10. Electrically, a 10. Cosmetically, a 10. It really does not get any better than this. If I were to keep this bike, the only things I would, I would do, I'd probably take the windshield off, unless I was going on a long ride, because I like the way they look without the shield on there, and I maybe put a set of fat gangster white walls. That's it, that's all I would do to this bike, not a damn other thing. Electrically, it's a 10. The running lights, the headlights, the high beam, the low beam, the horn, the tail lights, the, 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 rear, sit, uh, the rear running lights, everything works perfectly. It starts easily, and it's an absolute diamond from the bottom of the engine to the top of the, Original Harley Davidson, absolutely gorgeous white handlebar, um, the chrome, everything on this bike is just absolutely beautiful. This is the second year of the Hydroglide, excuse me, the Duo Glide. This Hydroglide fork was originally invented in 1949 and they discontinued the Hydroglide model in 1957, I have one of those here at the museum. That was the last year of the hardtail. And let me tell you, in 58, when they came out with, with the Duo Glide, which has the Hydro Glide front, front end, but it has rear coil over suspension, a much more modern frame design, very similar frame design to, to what they ran right up until uh, the, 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 the late 90s. So you've got, I don't know, three out, maybe two and a half, three inches of suspension travel here, and they maintained the a suspension seat, which has a buddy spring right here, which I have hooked up right now, because I'm like 250 with gear on. Uh, if you want an even smoother ride, you can collapse this spring, just push it back. So it's, it, it's just the, the spring here, but you have probably three and a half, four inches of travel on the seat. So this thing just floats down the road. The, 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 uh, the bar on the back of the seat here is super classy. We actually have a leather pad that goes on there too that comes with it for your, if you're gonna run a passenger. Um, the original profile of this bike is, is stunning and timeless. 57 was the last year of the hardtail. 58 was the first year of the dual glide. This is a 59, so it was second year. Anytime you buy a first year bike, there's always some, some bugs to work out. This was a second year model. All the bugs are worked out and, and the panhead motor is a spectacular machine. I'd ride this thing cross country. Of all the bikes I have in the museum here, We've, we've got the, uh, the flat head, the knuckle head, the shovel heads. Uh, I've got several pans. Um, I've got an 85 Heritage. Of all the, the classic bikes I have, this would be my choice if I was gonna do a cross country ride with a classic bike. Somebody who values a lot of these classic motorcycles just did a report last month, I think it was, on the, Har the value of the Harley Davidsons versus Vin Indians of the same era. That 47 knucklehead we have over there has $147,000 book value in number one condition. I think it was 107 in number two. Almost triple what an Indian of the same era would cost. And the reason why is the younger generation, i.e. the wealthy 30-somethings, 40-somethings, even youngsters like Junior in their 20s, like the look in the provenance of the Harley Davidson better. So that was what the article says. You can look it up yourself. It's on Haggerty talking about the, the classic values of the Harleys outpacing the Indians. So for, this is absolutely a museum quality, investment quality bike, and it's mechanically perfect. You could pull one out of a barn that's crusty, dusty, and, and, and auction it off. They're bringing twenty-five to $30,000, but you could never turn one of those into this without spending a fortune. You'd spend 50 grand trying to turn that barn turd into this because you'd be looking at hundreds of hours of labor and a lot of the parts are discontinued and you'd have to buy Chinese reproduction stuff. This is all original Harley and it's an absolute diamond. The, the forks on this are the original Hydroglide forks. Uh, Harold 
polish the aluminum lowers that no that's not chrome that's polished aluminum this is the original polished aluminum uppers the original front fender and protective bar the original brake system the original rims uh, the tires were replaced when he did the paint job on it and um they've got maybe 100 miles on it it glides down the road the, these crash bars on here were originally uh, turned inside harold was much smaller if you're under six foot you turn them in if you're over six foot you turn them out and you, and it's super nice to have really three spots to put your feet on the running board the highway pegs and these are the passenger pegs but if you're on a long run you got room to stretch out the uh, the running lights the chrome on the headlight and the chrome on the running lights it looks like it just came out of the box this is the original harley davidson windshield on here and it's absolutely perfect you can see the hydroglide logo they ran the same tin off the hydroglide because uh, it is a hydroglide front end i don't know if you can zoom in on that but uh, the original levers grips bars um the tank chrome the badges the inside of the tank is as nice as the outside the paint job is, is is a 10. the seat is absolutely stunning the original leather seat and of course they call it a pan head because the head looks like a pan uh the horn sounds fantastic uh just everything about this bike it's it's oil tight it runs perfect and it's an absolute diamond you could not turn your your twenty five thousand dollar barn find into this uh without spending a year of uh, of time chasing parts and where are you going to find a 65 year old set of saddlebags in pristine condition these original harley davidson bags the um the engine the transmission the 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 prime the primary everything's been gone through on the bike and it's an absolute diamond since harold owned a harley davidson dealership in bakersfield california and this one was crown jewels he lathered it with love and attention and it looked just like it does right now um I don't think it had been washed since the 80s because it was in his house on the on the shag carpeting along with the knucklehead and the other pans and the brand new cow glide with seven miles on it i mean one of the nicest collections of harley's I've ever seen in anybody's house literally in the house bakersfield california southern california very dry arid environment that's one of the reasons all the chrome on this bike looks like, looks like it just came out of the box it's never been exposed to salt or rain or left outside overnight or anything like that it's, it's been treated like a, a museum quality bike should be we got the bike here jimmy laurinaitis and i both fell in love with this bike jimmy is one of our best atex he specializes in vintage harleys he had like a three-week love affair with this bike and went some of the stuff he did i'm not sure it really needed but i told him with this bike I don't I, if this bike doesn't sell sell it staying here at the museum and it's one of my favorite bikes to ride so i said go through the whole thing top to bottom so he did what we call a full rotisserie mechanical inspection every square inch top to bottom of this was inspected and here's the work order that took him about a, over 100 hours to do everything on here because it was on his bench for for over three weeks he set the ignition timing set the points gap put new spark plugs in it a new push rod seal kit new push rod tubes new hydraulic lifters set the floorboards height correctly he put a new rear master cylinder assembly on it which is on the other side here around if you want to show him um it, he bled the cylinder put dot4 brake fluid in it and a new rear brake hose so um the whole brake system has been gone through the rear brake system full carburetor service took the carb off all new parts in the carb new carb to intake manifold isolator gasket new intake manifold o-rings new choke rod new champion spark plugs power lubed all the cables and adjusted everything put a new fuel peacock assembly on it rinsed the tank out put new fuel line o-ring seals a new clutch throw out bearing he had the whole primary off of the motorcycle went through everything and put a new clutch throw out bearing in it a new clutch push rod a new transmission side cover gasket he went through inspected the transmission new tr everything checked out great new transmission oil and he replaced the inner primary put a new inner primary tin on there with a new primary vent and fitting and a new oem inner primary mounting hardware he set the primary chain tension adjusted the clutch put in a new oem style six volt battery new battery terminal post bolts did a full engine oil service he changed the engine oil twice to flush it and make sure it was perfectly clean he's running 60 weight engine oil and a new oil filter he flushed out the fuel system cleaned out the tank it's running vp ethanol free fuel in it a new rear brake switch on it and it, the chain was in good condition but he upgraded to a heavy duty ek actually i think the chain was new but it have been on the bike since he since, since harold um put it in his in his living room 40 years ago so he put a new heavy duty ek chrome drivetrain i don't know if you can you show him the, the, the rear can even see it with the saddlebags on there it's a new chrome ek 
drive chain, the, the wheel was removed and cleaned in the, in, in the detail shop underneath the rear fender, inside, everything underneath there was clean with the rear wheel off of it. So this has given not only a full, a full what we call a full rotisserie detail all, also. Let's see, um, it has a new OEM ignition switch assembly uh, and it has a spare key zip tied to the clutch cable, which I think you can see. Uh, he greased the seat post, installed the booster springs, set the tire pressure, and he road tested it multiple times with a big smile on his face and completely dialed in the carburetor. This thing's tuned, like I said, to the nines. It didn't, probably didn't run this good when it was brand new. Um, and if it did, it was, it was set up right from the factory. We went through all of our electrical functions, operate perfectly. The, the charging system operation is perfect and a whole bunch of other things. Every nut and bolt on the spike was inspected and um, everything checked out 100%. The exhaust system is a classic fishtail style. It has a nice rumble at, at, at full throttle, uh, whispers at idle, has that, that Harley potato, potato sound that you want. Uh, the luggage rack on here looks brand new. It has, I, I left the California license plate on there. That's going with the bike. Uh, so, and the last time it was registered was 1987. The original taillight, the original rear fender, everything on the bike, the chrome battery cover, the, even, even the hardware that, that for the buddy spring, if you look, everything's just freaking museum quality beautiful on this bike. And it's, there's lots of barn finds out there and there's lots of hodgepodge repaints, but to buy one from a guy who owned a, a 43 bike collection, more than half of them classic vintage Harleys. And here's, just to give you an idea that who, who, who owned this bike, this is just a handful of the 42 bikes he had. This flathead, he used to bet his, his anybody who'd bet him at the bar, he'd put a $100 bill on the tank here and say, if I can't start this first kick, put your $100 bill up. Yeah, I guess he took a few hundred dollar bills. Most people wouldn't think you could start a, a 1928 Harley first kick. He had it tuned to the nines. This is his knucklehead. Look at this thing. It's absolutely freaking gorgeous, okay? This bike's worth well over $100,000. This is the nicest shovel head, king of the highway, I've ever seen. It has 3,000 miles on it. He bought it brand new. It's an absolute diamond. Then he had a show bike. This thing is every nut and bolt. This is his hot rod shovel head. The guys in the shop nicknamed it the titty bike. If you zoom in, you'll see why. Um, it's It's got a killer paint job on it, Dungeons and Dragons and Demons and uh, the, the paint job's sick, but um, that's a real hot rod if you look at the brakes and the forks, everything on it. Then he had this 85 Heritage Softail. This thing's an absolute diamond also. So, and that's his service car over there, which is still a little dusty. We haven't serviced it yet, but it's absolutely freaking spotless. It's just got 10 years of dust on it from sitting in his, in his shop. That one wouldn't fit in the living room. So these are just some of the 43. And he had the seven mile cow glide, which you'll see later today. I think we'll be filming that seven miles uh, and he bought that for his grandson and left it in his will he left all the bikes including the cow glide he left the cow glide to his grandson harold left the whole collection to his family and his son and his grandson and his son had serious medical problems and uh his grandson needed the money more than the bike i guess he's a young family got three two two or three little kids that were running around they're in the video from where at their house and uh so he sold us the whole collection but this of all of the bikes to actually ride the 93 Cow Glide and this Duo Glide are my favorite. The Duo Glide is an absolute freaking diamond. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's a, a major invest, six figure investment to buy these 43 bikes and ship them from California. And then 100 hours of shop labor at our shop, we build 150 hours, there's 15 grand of labor between the, the, the full rotisserie detail and all the work you did to it and shipping it cross country. It's a lot of work, um, it's a lot of time. And if I could keep them all, I would, but we have to sell some of them. So if this one sells, great. If it doesn't sell, great. This also happens to be our color, our company colors now are black and red. This is a black and red Harley, the FLH logo V being in red. Um, like I said, I wouldn't change a thing. I would probably take the windshield off because I like be having my wind in, wind in my face. But if I left the window windshield on for a long trip, I like the fact that it's lower. It's lower than my face, so I'm not looking through a windshield. I'd hate windshields that are up over my head, especially if it, it, just, it just kills the riding buzz for me. But um, anyways, 
I think you know how I feel about this bike. If you have any questions about it, give my son, Kenny Jr., a call. He's in the shop nine to five, Monday through Friday, 860-454-7024. Uh, this bike was set up like I was like Harold Zahner built it, you know, went through this bike and maintained it for himself. He never had any intentions to, to sell it. It was a family heirloom that he gifted to his children and it only got sold because of the financial situation. His son had medical issues and medical bills. Matter of fact, he called me on a Tuesday and said, I'm going in for surgery next Tuesday. I don't know how this is going to turn out. Can you come this weekend? I hopped on a plane, flew out to Bakersfield. Uh, we had already, he had been given an offer on the collection. Um, lesson. He told me what he wanted for it. I said, okay, if it checks out. I went out there, it was exactly what he sa said it was, and we purchased, I had two trailers waiting at his house in cross country on, on Saturday morning, and, and we purchased them, and we've been slowly and carefully lavishing them with the love and attention they deserve, uh, and, and this one is absolutely perfect. It's going to be in the museum on display if you want to look at it. The other thing that, that I might change if I kept the bike is I'd, I'd have the California license plate. I'd just have them do the numbers in red, in the cal in red, so the whole bike would be black and red and probably get rid of this, this sticker or change it to, to black and red. I don't know, just a detail. I'm, I got a little OCD, and, uh, or you can leave it the way it is, but I always recommend on every vintage bike we sell, look at the bottom of the engine, look at the frame rails. That'll tell you something about the condition of the bike. The bottom of the frame rails, on, the whole entire frame on this thing is like new. The bottom of the frame rails are like new and there's no grease or oil underneath there. It's nice and clean. He, he didn't even have an oil pan under this in his living room on the, on the shag carpet floor. Why? Because he knew it didn't leak oil and he had it there for almost 40 years. So uh, the carburetor looks brand new. The cylinder heads are pristine. The head gaskets, the base gaskets, everything. He went through everything on this bike. And probably, that's the, thing, that's the thing about these vintage Harleys, is when you rebuild an engine and it's machined properly, sometimes, it, not sometimes, but usually a good machine shop will come out better than, than the original engine because the tolerances and the factory builds aren't perfect. So this, they're done on an assembly line. This one was carefully by a master craftsman rebuilt and it's, it's a diamond. So bid high and bid off. And this, 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 I, I don't think this will be around very long at all, sadly. And, uh, I wish I had the money to keep it, but the New England Motorcycle Museum is supported 100% through the sales of, of our vintage motorcycles and the new motorcycle dealership here. Um, there is no wealthy benefactor. It's me and my family, and it's a massive facility. So uh, just like there's honors, it's being sold because we need the money. Uh, and this is my, one of my two favorite from the entire collection. If you have any questions about it, give us a call, 860-454-7024. We can actually finance this through Freedom Road. They finance vintage motorcycles, so, and we also take trade-ins. So if you're interested, give us a call, and I uh, hope it goes to a good home that loves it as much as I and Harold had the entire time he owned it. So thanks for watching. God bless Harley-Davidson, and God bless America.